Hello everyone. I am Dr. Suman Pawar, working as an assistant professor in Department of Zoology at Dada Patel Mahavidyalaya Karzar, District Ahmadnagar. Friends, this video is for educational purpose only. No copyright infringement. This copyright belongs to the rightful owners and credit goes to the respective image and the content providers. The topic of our today's discussion is arterial system in calotis versicolor. The arterial system is the system of blood vessels which distributes blood to different parts of the body of calotis and other vertebrates. Here is the system and its different arteries, sub arteries. The system starts with the anterior, border, anterior dorsal border of this ventricle which gives off three aortic arches namely the pulmonary arch, the right systemic arch and the left systemic arch. Here is the pulmonary arch which immediately divides into two branches that is the pulmonary arteries supplying deoxygenated blood to their respective lung so that after entering into the lung the deoxygenated blood get mixed with the oxygen and it becomes oxygenated. The right systemic arch it immediately divides into two branches or two arteries that is the right carotid artery and the left carotid artery. Both these carotid artery they immediately again divides into two branches that is the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery. A short vessel ductus carotidus it connects the systemic arch of its side with the carotid artery. Thus when this ductus carotidus joins with the left systemic arch it pours some oxygenated blood from the right systemic arch into the left systemic arch and thus the left left systemic arch it carries deoxygenated as well as the oxygenated blood through the internal carotid and the external carotid artery and their sub branches the entire head region the maxillary region the mandibular region palatine region all these regions they are supplied through these branches then after giving the esophageal artery then the vertebral artery and the common subclavian artery the right systemic arch it runs downwardly and it joins with its counterpart that is the left systemic arch and thus it forms a median dorsal stout artery in the form of dorsal avota. And further, this dorsal avota gives off several paired and the unpaired arteries to supply the entire trunk region and the associated structures. Let us see one by one. The three aortic arches which directly arise from the anterior dorsal border of the ventricle. The first arch is the pulmonary arch which starts from the right chamber of the ventricle that is cavum pulmonary. The left systemic arch it again starts from the right chamber of the ventricle while the right systemic arch it starts from the left chamber of the ventricle that is cavum dorsale. Each arch is provided with a pair of semilunar walls at its base which prevents the backflow of the blood that is the blood should not come back from these arches into the ventricle. At the base all these three arches they are bound together by a fibrous sheath of connective tissue. This is a diagrammatic representation of heart of calotis which shows origin of these three aortic arches. See 
this is the pulmonary arch this is the left systemic arch and here is the right systemic arch which immediately gives off two branches that is the left and the right carotid arteries here is the ventricular portion which shows the right and the left chamber the blood from the right chamber that is the deoxygenated blood from the right auricle it directly get forced into the pulmonary arch here is the middle one that is the left systemic arch it also receives partially the deoxygenated as well as some of the oxygenated blood thus it carries mixed type of blood whereas the right systemic arch as it is associated with the left chamber of the ventricle it receives the oxygenated blood which through its branches and sub branches of the carotid arteries it supplies the entire head region and the associated structures the pulmonary arch it arises from the right chamber of the ventricle and it divides to form the left and the right pulmonary arteries which are turn posteriorly and enter in their respective lung for oxygenation that is for mixing of the oxygen with that blood the pulmonary trunk or the pulmonary arch carries deoxygenated blood to the lungs the second arch which arises from the anterior dorsal border of the ventricle is the left systemic arch which carries mixed type of blood as it receives the oxygenated blood through ductus carotidus and deoxygenated blood through the right chamber then the left systemic arch gives off esophageal artery and then it runs downwardly to join with the right systemic arch for formation of dorsal aorta the right systemic arch it arises from the left chamber of the ventricle and contains almost oxygenated blood and it is associated with the left chamber of the ventricle which directly receives the oxygenated blood from the left auricle the right systemic arch it gives off number of arteries to the cephalic and anterior regions of the body those arteries are first the coronary artery which supplies blood to heart and the pericardial wall the carotid arteries they are namely the left and the right carotid arteries which divides and redivides and sends several branches to supply the oxygenated blood to the entire head elements of carotids the esophageal arteries they supplies blood to the esophagus several vertebral arteries at regular intervals they supplies the vertebrae in their particular region the subclavians the common subclavian further divides into two branches and it runs into its respective forelimb to supply the entire elements of the forelimb the ductus carotidus these are the short vessels which connects each carotid artery with the systemic arch of its side the dorsal aorta it is formed by joining of the left and the right systemic arch which runs posteriorly along the mid dorsal line just below the vertebral column of carotids the dorsal aorta provides blood to visceral organs and posterior part of the body of carotids the dorsal aorta gives off the anterior esophageal artery supplying the esophagus and the associated structures several paired parietal arteries which supplies the parietal body wall and the associated elements in that region the gastric arteries it supplies blood to the stomach region 
The anterior mesenteric artery, it is sends several branches and supplies the liver, then the spleen, the body wall muscles and the digestive elements. The anterior mesenteric artery, this is a large stout and paired artery. It divides and re-divides and send several branches to different digestive elements of digestive system. Then, the celiac artery, it is again a stout unpaired artery which gives off several sub-arteries supplying blood from the ventral region of the digestive elements. The posterior mesenteric, the posterior mesenteric artery, it is again an unpaired stout artery which by dividing and re-dividing supplies the wall of intestinal region as well as the associated structures. The genital artery. The paired artery which supplies the reproductive structures or the genital structures in calotes. Several paired renal arteries, they enter in their respective kidney and supplies the entire kidney where the extraction of the nitrogenous waste takes place. The iliac arteries, the iliac arteries, this is a pair of large artery which runs downwardly and enters in its respective hind limb and through several branches it supplies the entire elements of its respective hind limb. And finally and posteriorly. The dorsal aorta it terminates in the form of caudal artery. Thus, we have learned, we have discussed about the arterial system in calotis, its a branching and sub-branching and distribution of the blood to different parts of the body of calotis. Students, in case you have any doubt about the content of this video, or any questions about the topic covered, kindly email me on the given mail address. Thank you. Thank you for your patient listening. Once again, this video is for educational purpose only. No copyright infringement. This copyright belongs to its rightful owner. Credit goes to the respective image and the content providers. Students, for more videos, kindly visit our YouTube channel, Great Knowledge Bank. Thank you.